welcome to our webinar, The Battle of the TMS. My name is Sammy Anderson. I'm our marketing coordinator here at South Acrylic, and I will also be our moderator throughout these battles. Keep them clean. At South Acrylic, we work with four of the major tank management systems in the industry at any given point. Some of us have experience in all four, while others have more of a deep experience in a few, but we're always learning more and more about them every day. And as we do, we like to battle it out internally about the greatness and fury about the different tech managers as we, that we live and die by during our day-to-day -day jobs. We do it by cracking jokes, clapbacks at each other, just trying to add, we collectively learn more about each tech management system as we do. We thought it'd be fun to open up the discussion to the industry so you guys can help us make fun of each other and collectively continue to learn more and more about the different tech management systems. We hope to have more battles, get better at them as we move along and then open the door to other experts around the globe to jump in and also battle to participate. So with that being said, we can go over our agenda here. We're gonna go through our different introductions and our disclaimer, then we'll go get into the rounds of the battle. So how it's gonna work is each tag management tag management system will have 90 seconds to defend themselves per battle. After the battle is over and all four have had their chance to defend themselves, we'll give you guys 30 seconds to vote who you think won that round. Then we'll move on to the next round. We'll move through four to five questions and then we'll head into our closing arguments for each tag manager. They'll have one minute to make their final, final stance and then we'll have a closing survey for you guys as well before we get out of here. Our disclaimer for this webinar is that this tag management system battle, it's purely based on our expertise in consulting and implementing these tag managers to various clients in real world business scenarios. We are not influenced by any representatives of the tag management platforms that are being compared or by any third party agencies to exaggerate or short tell the functionality of these platforms. The options laid out in the webinar are solely of the individual. The opinions may include factually incorrect in information or statements on how a TMS may operate, we rely on the audience to call us out or battle us if you'd like and help us correct these during or post webinar. For every discussion we have, we're seeking the truth. If you have a strong opinion, a new tag manager we don't know about, or if you want us to explore a specific scenario in a future webinar, please email us at info at So with that being said, I'll let the panelists introduce themselves. If Jean-Paul, you wanna start off. All right, I'll start off. So I'm Jean-Paul Behrens. I'm the analytics sensei at Soft Acrylic. I lead the practice. And today I'm actually going to be defending Google Tag Manager and Insighten. We had a last minute drop from our Insighten expert. Um, so, so I'll be representing two, hopefully equally well. Um, and um, I'm looking forward to kick some butt. Great. JP, you got your, hands, uh, got your hands full there. I'm Jason Moore. I'm a former senior consultant at uh, Soft Acrylic for Digital Analytics. And uh, I've got a background in using both Google Tag Manager as well as Telium. Uh, so I will be taking the, uh, the Telium hat on here today and challenging JP heavily on uh, how it's much better than Google Tag Manager. So get ready, JP. Um, Ray Piccolotti, uh, senior consultant. Um, been doing this for, for 10 plus years. Uh, been, I've worked with all four, um, but um, more recently, uh, my expertise lie in Adobe Launch, so I'll be defending them. Yes, and one last thing I would like to add, um, you know, feel free to chat in the, in the Zoom chat box or anything. Uh, we look forward to, to all your comments and the uh, clapbacks. And as always, if you have any questions or follow-ups during after the webinar, feel free to email us info at softcolic.com. But we'll get right into our battles here. All right. If I can find my Zoom. All right, so for round one, the question is, how steep is the learning curve for new users to adopt the TMS? Ray, we're gonna start with you. Ready? All right, ready. So launch starts off with a great series of YouTube videos for, for real beginners. Um, they cover 
the, the very basics really quickly, um, which I think helps in that uh, the early phases of, of your learning curve. Um, if you're just doing kind of standard implementation, kind of basic to moderate complexity, you can, you can pretty much do everything without any sort of custom code or really technical chops. Um, uh, you know, there, there are some caveats to that, uh, assuming you have a data layer on the page. Um, but um, once, once the data is there, you can pick it up, you can, you can move it around, you can concatenate and um, hinge on a bunch of events without having to write any code. Um, you can then uh, manipulate that data, send it off to various tools, um, again, without any code. Um, so getting to that, that, that intermediate to moderate, um, I think is, is quite quick, quite easy. Um, I do have to concede probably going from, from intermediate to expert can be, um, uh, you know, quite the challenge. Um, uh, when you do get into the coding side, there's, there's, um, there, there's, there's things to be learned there, but overall a good curve for, for most users. All right, good timing. JP, pick which uh, Tag Manager you're doing first here. All right, I'm going to go with Google Tag Manager first. All right, you're on the clock. All right, and I think GTM is probably the easiest of all Tag Managers to learn. Um, I mean, there's it's just so user friendly and intuitive. Um, you know, I think Google has that formula nailed. Um, and on top of that, there's just so many resources out there that you can just Google and learn. Um, I remember my first time going into GTM, um, you know, it was a little bit weird. I was a, I was an Insighten guy actually. Um, and then a DTM guy. And so with, with D GTM, you know, you kind of, you're kind of forced to adopt like this data driven data layer, which is like this big buzzword nowadays, right? Um, and, and it just makes everything a lot more user-friendly, I think, and, and more intuitive. Um, they have this really nice, uh, which I think is my favorite feature, the, the little console that appears when you're previewing something. Um, I mean, not only did that help me learn about how to better tag or, or, or what, what were my tags doing in any given event, I learned about HTML through GTM. So, so I think GTM is, is, the, is probably the easiest and um, you know, more user-friendly out of all of them. And, and I think the learning curve is, is not that big. <laughs> all right, Jason, we'll go to you. How steep is the learning curve for new users to adopt your TMS? Got it. Go ahead. All right, so I'd say the first thing with Telium is typically um, when you go through an implementation with them, you're paired with an implementation engineer, uh, as well as you get some, some project management support. So in a lot of ways, there's an onboarding there, which really lessens that initial learning curve. Um, but in addition to that, they provide quite a few resources that really make it easy to, to onboard to the tool. Um, it does, this includes, um, they do conferences as well as learning sessions. Um, formerly I think referred to as uh, Telium University, um, as well as they've internalized um, their entire learning portal and all of, their, uh, all of their support resources. So instead of having to go to Stack Overflow or Google, um, they've gone through and had a series of their engineers populate several documents and sort of forum posts, if you will, on exactly how to configure a tag and a lot of it is specific to the vendor. So it's not just, here's how you configure any tag, here's this specific tag and exactly how you configure it. And with the way that they've constructed their tag library, typically you're able to take whatever vendor information you have that you're trying to set up a tag for and directly plug it into those tags without um, you know, any code interaction. So it's a really, really easy learning curve. It's not. <laughs> JP, back to you. All right, Insighten. So Insighten was my first tag manager. Um, I have to say, 
maybe it was a reflection of my of being my first i was overwhelmed um for a moment there i thought i was i mean i freaked out i thought i needed to learn how to code i'm not a coder um and so i remember my consultant i i, I reached out to him and i was like hey you know like am i gonna have to learn how to do data definitions um and he assured me no you know so so the the consultant was really good in that way i think Similar to Telium, you have a really good onboarding process. I'll give him that. Um, and in addition to that, the, um, the training videos were really good. You know, I think that we have, um, you know, the, they had this insight and manage uh, tool, right? Which is what you end up using. Um, and, and they go really deep into all the different details about it. I think they're a little bit dated um, well, they are dated, but I think they may have updated them recently. I didn't check actually, but, but if they have, that's great. But if they haven't, then I think these videos are from like 2010. Um, but overall I ended up learning it, but it did take a while, I must say. Um, but, but yeah, that's what I would say. All right. So that's the end of round one here. So everyone who's in the audience, go, go to that poll tab at the bottom of your Zoom and vote for question one, and it'll have the same question, how steep is the learning curve for new users to adopt the TMS? We'll give you about 30 seconds here before we move on to our second round question. Do you need to enable? Should be up now, sorry about that. Tilium is in the lead for this first round here. So we'll start introducing our second round question. How user-friendly is it to work with dev and product, product environments with your TMS? Ray, we'll start with you and launch. All right, uh, JP, GTM.
and you're starting to learn about it, I think it's going to be a little confusing. Um, but once you just know it and you kind of hack their way of doing it, which is what ends up, everybody ends up doing, um, it becomes very easy. But, but yeah, I think it can be a little confusing. All right, Jason, over to you. Yeah, so I think Telium actually excels here, despite uh, Rydell's uh, comments in the uh, chat there. Um, I think, uh, you know, Telium has a really clear um, dev, QA, prod set of environments that you can publish to. And obviously, you've got the ability to, um, you know, publish just to one environment or to all environments. So um, from a standpoint of controlling changes, I think, um, you know, that's, that's pretty par for the course. Um, but in terms of controlling um, the different environments, uh, I think Telium actually excels here. Um, in addition to being able to just create load rules or criteria that um, control which environment tags can, can fire in, they've also built in flags so that you can just toggle a button to do the exact same thing. So from a, from a beginner user standpoint, I think it's a lot more clear what's happening there as opposed to writing a true load rule or condition. But similar to uh, what Rave is touching on, I think uh, Telium does a good job with one of their um, with their web companion, where you can simulate an environment. So I'm working on something in Dev, and it's been published to Dev, but I'm on my production site, and I want to see how that's going to work and run without actually pushing it into production. So to manage risk, you can simulate any environment through that uh, web companion, and I really think that being able to do that and toggle that. Um, sets Telium pretty far ahead. Awesome. JP, wrap up round two. All right, in Saiten. So in Saiten, I think that to implement this is is a little complicated. I mean, I guess Cheyenne said it pretty well on, on the chat. It's very developer-centric, right? So if you keep that in mind uh, and you have a developer figure this out, then it it becomes easy because you need to have one bootstrap in dev, another bootstrap in staging if you have, and then another one in, in prod. I mean, it's up to you how you want to do that, but, but you usually need different integration codes. Um, and then, but that's, that's actually the easy part. The, the difficult part is managing, you know, what you have to commit and, uh, you know, testing what you've committed and um, you know, versus what's published, there's like an extra step there that you need to go. You need to like uh, enable the rule, then you need to commit it, then you need to publish it to stage. And then let's say you did that, um, then you want to push that to production, then you need to merge that to production, commit, and then publish. So it takes a long time. Um, I think it's, it's good because it's very secure that way. You're, you're kind of mitigating pushing wrong code into production. But I think overall, it's detrimental to the uh, experience. All right. All right, now viewers, if you go back to that poll and go to question number two, now is the time to vote who had the best arguments for how user-friendly it is to work with development and product environments with their TMS system. And then we'll move on to round three. Round three. It looks like launch just barely won round one. There you go, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Open launch just pulled ahead again here. All right, so battle three. How can multiple teams work at the same time with your TMS? JP, do you want to start with Insighton? Uh, we'll start with Insight and yes. So the, th this goes back to the, the comment I was saying earlier about committing changes and then publishing them. So the problem with Insight and is that if two people are, are working at the same exact time and I'm work working on one tag and somebody else is working on another one completely different, I can only, and in the same environment, right? I can only commit I can only test what's committed or what's published. So if I want to commit something, 
then I need to coordinate with that other person that's also working on it and let him know like, hey, I'm committing this. Don't publish it to production or to staging. I'm just committing it. And then you need to use a browser plugin to change from the, what is it, the Nexus to the Nexus test, which is like the whole thing about testing in, in, in committed state versus published state. So it can get confusing. And I've ran into, uh, you know, different conflicting scenarios where by mistake we end up publishing the work of somebody else without really knowing. I mean, there's a big window that tells you like, Hey, you're going to publish this before you publish. Um, uh, but still, you know, you just kind of do it and, and you don't realize it. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's a bit challenging. Um, and yeah, that's what I think. All right. Ray, let's hear about launch. Um, so multiple teams working in launch works beautifully with the caveat if they're working on different rules. Um, so you could have, um, if they're working on a similar feature set, both team, team members could be working um, on, um, in the same library or like how I, I like to do it with folks is um, I'm working on something, maybe I have a JIRA ticket associated with that. I put that JIRA ticket number in the name of the library. If anybody's unclear about what is happening there, they can look that JIRA ticket up. The other team member is doing a similar thing in their, their um, development environment, they're testing theirs. And then when um, one of us uh, is done, we can move that into the, um, like the wider, development environment that maybe goes across all of pre-production. So it works really well. Um, I do have to admit that if you're working on the same rule, if two teams are trying to touch the same rule, um, it can get kind of convoluted. Um, in the name of simplicity, they, I think, gave up some features. You really want it to feel a bit more like a, um, a GitHub repository where you could check out and commit because it kind of looks like that, but you can't quite have that granular of control, but overall it, it does quite a good job, I think. Awesome. And JP, back to you. All right, back to me, yeah. GTM. <laughs> so the question, the question was, how easy is it to, for two people to work in tandem, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think GTM does it the best. Um, they have the concept called workspace, so it completely separates what you're doing from what other people are doing uh, if you have two different workspaces. Um, and if you end up publishing that workspace or somebody you know, publishes it, next time you log into the one that you were working, it'll actually let you know, hey, there's a new version, merge those changes. And you can see the changes side by side and you can even decide if you want to merge it or not. I think that process is beautiful um so so yeah i mean i think that's all there is to say i think it's the easiest thing ever uh very clear um i think maybe some people uh don't end up using that um well you know what i'll, I'll be fair i think that the free version of gtm only has three workspaces whereas the 360 version you can have unlimited um it would be nice to see the unlimited one on the free version because I mean, there can be more than three things happening at the same time. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's the best. All right. Jason, let's hear it. So this one's a little bit rough for Telium. I'm sure this uh, is making JP happy. Um, so I've, I've always found that um, multiple people working within Telium can be a little bit clunky as well as uh, they're, they're a bit restrictive. So they don't have a, a model where you're, you're checking something out to work on it. It's a, it's a lot more based on um, who got in there first and when somebody makes and submits a change. So those are really the two things that drive the way that um, that, that collaboration works in, in Helium. And really it boils down to if somebody got in there first and started messing, or messing around with something, um, you're you're able to either adapt to their path when they make it when they make a change, or you can continue kind of operating on things the way that they are now and make your changes. But ultimately, 
um, when somebody submits a change and when you submit a change, you're forced to, uh, to, to merge. Um, and in that, you know, if somebody's working on the same item, there's definitely potential there to, to generate conflicts and um, it, it forces you to choose. So I don't think that it's very, um, very conducive to, um, you, you really have to have good communication in order to make sure that you're um, not stepping on each other's toes when it comes to collaborating and, uh, and doing. So a bit of opportunity there, but um, yeah, a bit of opportunity. All right. End of round three. Now it's your guys' turn. If you haven't placed your vote yet, I see some people have been voting as the discussion is going. Place your vote now. We've got about 20 seconds left before we'll start round four. All right, so from round three, it looks like Telium is sliding away with the win there. What? There you go. We're <laughs> <laughs> working with multiple teams at the same time. So for round four, how do, di how do different tag management solutions fit for the size of business? All right, Jason, we'll start with you and Telium. Cool. Uh, so I think uh, I think Telium is definitely uh, sized to be a bit more for the bigger players, right? It's a it's a paid for service. It's not a free service. Um, and, and in addition to um, you know the tag management offering, Telium has uh, other services um, that stem into big data as well as they've got um, you know their own sort of paid services and consulting sort of wing to it. So I, I think. In a lot of ways, they're positioned for um, the, the bigger companies. Um, really, what they um, what they what they strive for, I think, anyway, is um, from a from a solution standpoint. If you're approaching a marketing team and they're missing out on that IT support, I think Telium definitely capitalizes on being able to supplement that by being able to help marketers deploy tags without putting a burden on IT, either by empowering them to do that themselves or through those um, professional services. And really what they've spent a lot of time focusing on is integrating that tag management solution with their other big data solutions, which again is another, re it's another play at getting into some of those big businesses when you start looking at um, customer management and uh, customer data and um, sort of cloud type solutions like they've really bridged out to. Definitely for the bigger guys. All right. JP, how does GTM work with different, with different sizes of business? I think the free version of GTM is, like I said earlier, probably the most user-friendly one. And any small, even a mom and pop shop can use it. Um, when it, you know, it starts getting the issue with GTM, even the free and the, the paid one, the GTM 360, you don't pay for it. It kind of comes with the package. Um, you start the, the container size. I've only run into this issue with, uh, with GTM where depending on the amount of tags and amount of things you put in there, uh, in the container, then you run into the size limit that you can no longer add new tags or triggers or anything. And so for the larger companies, um, you know, I think even, even the paid version, uh, like I said, it, it doesn't seem, um, you know, well suited for that. Um, then again, how much stuff are you going to have in your tag manager. I mean, it's probably a bad thing if you have that, you know, if you're reaching the limit anyway. So, so maybe they do that to force you to be better, right? Um, but, but yeah, I think GTM is better for, for smaller companies. Um, and uh, yeah, larger companies, maybe, maybe not so, maybe not so good. All right. Ray, how about launch? 
Yeah. All right. So, I mean, launch launch is is probably in the the mid to large range. I mean, it comes with um, the Adobe Experience Cloud solution. So, if, so if you so if you purchase analytics, um, you get you get launch along with it. So, um, you know. You, you know, a, a small a small mom and pop shop is is not going to spring for Adobe Analytics in, in in most situations. So they're really probably not going to be used by a smaller smaller company like that. So um, uh, yeah, I think they where they where they um, do some interesting work too is is in the larger, more security focused um, enterprises because they do have the cloud hosting option, which is kind of standard. How I um, most people would would are likely working with launch. They do also have a self-hosted option where, um, if let's say you're you're a bank um, and you really don't like the idea of of having some third-party JavaScript that can change at any time on the cloud, um, you can you can self-host and really and really kind of control it. Um, uh, so um, yeah, you you get you get some of those higher-end enterprise options as well with it. Perfect. Thank you. JP, what do you have left in Saiten? In Saiten, yes. I think in Saiten is definitely for the larger companies. Um, I think it's very similar to the Telium uh, situation. Um, you know, I think in part of it is because of the steep learning curve. Um, you know, and Saiten usually comes with a really good support system, um, you know, from professional services. Um, I think they, they do an amazing job. They know their tool set inside and out. I mean, some of the smartest people I've worked with uh, have been in Saiten consultants and in Saiten support, technical support. Um, so I don't think, I mean, it's a paid version, right? Um, it's a paid tool. I don't think a, a small company can, can go with it. Um, it also has other tools within Insighten that are not just the tag manager. Um, and I think specifically their, their privacy options now are, are really where they want to hone in. Um, you know, privacy is a huge topic. And I think Insighten is, is kind of going, to trying to corner that market. And I think they're doing a really good job at it. Um, so, so all of that really, you know, plays towards the larger players. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, I, I would find it a little interesting to see a medium, medium to small size company using Insighten. Um, but you know, you, you, would have to really rationalize it for me. Uh, but, but overall, yeah, big companies use insights and for sure. All right. Now is the time to vote. If you haven't placed your vote yet on which TMS you see is the best fit for the size of business in that poll there, you'll have about 30 seconds. And JP, do you think we go to round five or do we go to closing arguments? What's your call? um maybe we can maybe we can go to what's question five what level of support is available for the tag manager okay yeah let's do it all right all right so there's the question what level of support is available for your tag manager jp you can start it out i'll start with insighten you know okay. building on my last question uh the support of insighten is amazing like I said, uh, the smartest folks I've worked with, some of the smartest folks I work with are in site and support. Um, there isn't a lot of, you know, Googling within Saiten. It's, it's really difficult. And their knowledge base is, is also, for some reason, kind of obscure. It's like teliums. It's very obscure. <laughs> um, you know, so it's kind of difficult. I don't understand why it is. Maybe I just don't know how to use it. Um, but the support team is wonderful 24 seven. Um, and, uh, and I think that part of the issue too, is you find really almost like a very few insighting experts out there. Um, I think they're very centralized to insighting as a company. Um, and again, they do an amazing job there. Um, but, but that's something to keep in mind, you know, like, Insighten is a tool you can self-learn if you really, you know, yeah, if you, if you go through that steep learning curve. Um, but you're going to have to rely on the support, which I think they, they do a really good job at it. Yeah. So support is great. Paid support's great. Free support, not so great. 
All right. Ray, what's the support like with launch? Uh, so yeah, with, with launch, you, you do get access to, um, because you're getting an Adobe solution, you get access to their customer care. So you can email or call um, uh, and get support that way. They don't know, always have the best reputation. I think it's a little hit or miss on, on who happens to grab your ticket. I've worked with folks that are kind of full-blown consultants practically and, and really do a good job of, um, of helping you through problems. Um, others uh, point you to help articles and don't necessarily do, uh, you know, they make you go through a few hoops to jump through before they bump it up to the next level of um, support. So um, you'll get there eventually. Um, uh, the documentation has gotten dramatically better over the last few years, just all, all the Adobe solutions. Um, so there's, there's a lot more there. Um, uh, if you're willing to dig around, if you're doing something more developer focused, um, I would also wouldn't, wouldn't shy away from um, Googling something and then adding GitHub on the end. Um, there's um, been, I've been seeing more and more kind of cool little solutions ending up. Um, even though it's not like say a full application, it's little snippets and things that um, people have, have put up on, on ways to um, get things done and launch. So it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a mixed bag, but overall um, you'll get there. You'll get there. All right, Jason, how about you? Helium. I think Helium does a really good job with support. So one of the things that I saw a lot when I was um, you know, using the tool regularly is you know in addition to just having the support portal um you know they're they've got their they've got their forums and whatnot um you know you can submit tickets just like any other tool but what you'll find in a lot of cases is that the people that are answering the tickets have probably answered the same question 10 different times and what i think Telium does a good job with is they've got a group of people that are both answering tickets but then they'll go out there and they'll just create documentation that explains this common problem in a way where you're able to reference it as a document. So I think they do a really good job of providing that. Um, you know, obviously a lot of people probably had to go through that pain before me, but um, you know, it was nice to see that, uh, that they were going through and creating documentation for common problems as a means of making sure that their clients were set up as a means of, um, or with, uh, with the tools that they needed. The other thing that I really like about the, the Telium setup is you're generally paired with uh, a CSM. Right. So from a CSM standpoint, not only are you able to submit something to, uh, you know, to a support portal and specify your severity, I've got somebody I can call and let them know I've got a 911, my data stopped, like I need this fixed now. So they do a really good job of partnering with you as well as giving you the tools to manage your own, you know, resourcing or get help where you need it. Perfect. And JP, wrap it up here with GTM, I believe. Yep, GTM support is non-existent. They don't have support. Um, I think they say that you get support with 360, but I've never seen it. Maybe there's a special door somewhere or a phone number that I'm not privy to. Uh, so they, they just don't support you. Um, that's Google. I think their model is more focused or, or they rely a lot more on partners. Um, and so it ends up being a, you know, you, your support ends up being your partner, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, it, it's, there are all sorts of partners um, and you really have to choose the right one. Once you have the right one, I think then it becomes amazing because Google Tag Manager has probably the most robust you know, knowledge base, you know, Google, I think does a really good job at that. But not only that, the community, I think there's an insane amount of knowledge on GTM. You, you even have a very famous blogger, Simo, who, you know, the guy is like GTM incarnate. Um, you know, he knows everything. And so if you have a question on GTM, you can just probably the answer, Google the question, Simo, and then you'll get it. Um, so, so I think in that sense, the support, the free support, is great Google support zero and the agency support that you partner with it can be a hit or miss depending on who your partner is all right thanks guys so if anyone hasn't voted yet on that round five question put your vote in now 
There we go, there's a couple. And then we'll get started right into our closing arguments. This will be a minute long per person. And we will start with, Ray, do you wanna start with launch? Sure, yeah, All right. so, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, who are we kidding? In most situations, if you're, uh, if you're a new client and you come to Adobe and you buy a solution, you get launch. Why would you use anything else? I mean, it's a great, it's a great solution. There are some, there are some situations, Cheyenne, I'm looking at you where, where maybe it didn't work, doesn't work for you, but, um, uh, you know, it does, it does, you know, beginners well, it does experts well. I mean, one thing I didn't mention is there's a full API. Um, anything you can do in the UI, you can do through it, um, an API. So, um, uh, you know, if you have a really tech savvy team, you could um, really kind of automate some things. If you need to have a um, an environment that mirrors all your others with slight different changes, like you know, you you could you could save yourself tens or hundreds of hours with with the API. So um, everything else I said applies as well. So launch. Awesome, Jason. Do you want to go next? All right, let's hear it. So I think Telium has two key value propositions. I think uh, service is uh, one of the biggest ones. Obviously, they've put a huge emphasis on that. Uh, but I think the other, uh, the other key thing to keep in mind with them is they've got a team of people that are implementing integrations and creating new tags for their library. And that's strictly what they do. So, you know, if you look at something like GTM, there's maybe 15 different tags that you can configure out of the box before you start having to mess with code. Helium has thousands um, and they keep them up to date. So I think they do a really good job of making it easy for marketers in a large scale organization to configure tags because there's a wide range of different solutions out there that people could be chasing down. And Telium's focused on trying to capture all those solutions and make them easy to deploy on your site without any uh, IT involvement. So uh, I think Telium's a, a good pick for a big company. All right. JP, do you want to start with GTM, your closing argument? Okay. So GTM is the most user-friendly one out there by far. Um, I think everybody, may, maybe launch can can go you know go against it there. Um, very simple but very powerful. I like the updates that they release every now and then. Um, I don't know when they do it, but every now and then they'll release an update, and that update you know is like now there's this new regex table variable that didn't exist before, and so many use cases where you had to use custom code are now eliminated, right? And I think that's what a tag manager should do at the end of the day is eliminate the need for custom code. Um, I think you'll never eliminate the need for a developer. Um, you know, you'll always need one, whether it's in the application side or to manage, GT, you know, the tag manager itself. Uh, but, but I think GTM, because of the, the community more than anything else, I think it's a great choice. All right, then you can take us home with your Insighten closing argument. So for Insighten, I think this tool is, you know, it's trying to, to, how do I say this, to define itself separate from the rest. Uh, I think they are trying to focus on the privacy settings and uh, they have this other slew of tools that I think are not very well known. And I think they're amazing. Um, I think we've, you know, I've used the Pulse tool, uh, you know, separately in, in different things. It can get complicated. So, you know, I think, I think we just have to face that fact that Insighten is very developer friendly. Um, you definitely need a developer if you go in Insighten. Like if you, if you buy Insighten thinking you won't, you know, and, and I think that's like probably one of the biggest lies of the industry is that a tag manager with the tag manager, you no longer need dev resources, right? That's not true, uh, especially not with Insighten. But with the support that Insighten provides, I think you're, you're pretty safe. Awesome. Thank you, all three of you. I think you gave each of the tag management systems a fair battle here. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. If you haven't yet taken that end survey poll, 
it is now live. You can click that poll button. There's two questions left for you to fill out. We basically just want to hear if you want to participate, kind of your feedback on how this went, and if you enjoyed this type of webinar. We'll be happy. We're planning to do some more in the future. As we were saying before, we want to get more people involved, get more experts involved, have better arguments, kind of get at each other's throats a little bit. It's fun. We all live for this kind of thing. So thank you again for tuning in. And if you have any further questions, you can reach out at info at softcrylic.com. Please send us questions. We want to know more. We want to do, do this more with you guys. So, so absolutely. Thank you for attending.